Okay, so today we are going to talk about Crime Watch and low sec PvP. Um, uh, so let's start off. So the three things we're going to do um, is for thoughting, I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I'm CCP Master Plan. I'm a member of Team 50, and I was up here last year doing a similar talk. So we're going to do a review of the stuff that we uh, that's happened since the last time I was in here. I've got some graphs to show. Uh, and then we're going to talk a bit about what's coming up next in Odyssey. Um, we've also got a roundtable on Saturday afternoon. Uh, we did the same thing last year. I presented the stuff, and then we did the roundtable a few days later. Uh, got a whole bunch of good feedback, so we're going to do the same thing again this year. Uh, so 2 o'clock on uh, chat room 3. So part one, last 12 months. Um, it's actually 13 months, because FanFest got moved back a month this year. Uh, so one year ago, uh, in FanFest 2012, I was stood here, up there. Uh, um, and I talked about Crime Watch. And this year, I'm going to talk a bit more about Crime Watch. Um, and this picture of me stood on a stage in front of a, me stood on a stage kind of makes me feel like that sometimes. <laughs> so if I end up next year doing another talk, then we'll have like three generations of this. Um, so one of the things I talked about last year was the big ball of mud. Um, Crime Watch was a bad, bad system. Uh, many, many problems. I'm not going to go over them all again. That was all in last year's talk. Uh, this was a slide I put up uh, just to kind of show it wasn't a very nice thing. I kind of equated it to this, which was also not a very nice thing. Um, but things have been getting better. So uh, after FanFest last year, we did the roundtables. We got a lot of good feedback on what was the seed of the idea at the time. Um, various groups that I, I spoke to kind of gave us some good ideas, uh, told us some things that we were proposing that were good and not so good. So that was all, uh, that was all really useful. Um, so then we got to Inferno. Um, summer of last year, we released a lot of back-end stuff. Um, there wasn't a lot of visible changes at that point, uh, but it was like the first five or so months that, uh, that we've been working on Crime Watch. Um, and we were working more on the design. So we're starting to get a better idea of the flags. Uh, a little bit of engagements, which was something that did come out of last year's talk. And last year we were talking about the um, criminal and the suspect flagging and, and how people could attack them but not be attacked back. And, and it wasn't the greatest design. Uh, we kind of really honed in on limited engagements um, kind of from that feedback. Um, Sentry gun changes. We had our own internal talks. We spoke with the CSM. Um, one particular idea uh, that was talked about got into the CSM minutes. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, this was the uh, Sentry guns are going to shoot cap ships and they'll shoot stronger and stronger and stronger and they'll kill a carrier in four minutes on a gate. And people weren't happy. Um, this was just an idea at the time. So. Don't get too angry about everything you read. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's brainstorm. You know, there's no such thing as a bad idea when, when we're doing this. It's only a bad idea if it gets to TQ. <laughs> um, then in, what was the date on this? October, did the Crime Watch 2.0 dev blog, which was uh, kind of the first complete set of, of what we were going to do. We had the plan. Um, and in that, as a previously back at FanFest in March. Um, so it had charts. It was kind of the first time that the aggression system had any kind of documentation. Uh, helped us in the design and helped me as a programmer. Um, it actually detailed the limit engagement stuff, which I've already mentioned kind of came out from last year. Uh, the thread from that went on for a l weeks and weeks and got loads of good feedback. Um, Weapons timer and Tech 3 ships. So uh, a lot of people were used to let the Tech 3 ship get into structure and then eject. So they weren't in it when it blew up and they didn't lose the skill points. Um, <laughs> uh, with the weapons timer, if you'd been shooting, you couldn't eject. And some people weren't so happy about that. Um, we went to and fro a bit, but in the end decided to, to stick with that. Um, um, can flipping is. A, a really good, uh, a good thing came out of that was how people use can flipping to trigger 1v1s. Um, 
With the suspect changes, as soon as you steal from a can, you'll become a global target, which everyone versus one isn't the same as a 1v1, so it's, it's a bit of fun. Um, we couldn't do anything in time for retribution 1.0, but we kind of solved that a bit later, as we'll see. Um, things like the sphere launch, uh, interdiction sphere launches. Um, originally, you could fire them and jump through a gate, and then at some point it got changed so that you could fire them and not jump for 60 seconds. Then that got broken, and then you could jump again, even though you weren't really supposed to, and no one really knew what it's supposed to do. And uh, again, we, we kind of clarified what that was going to do and then uh, decided not to do it. So that's actually now what it's supposed to do, and it's actually working as it's supposed to. So we shipped Retribution 1.0. Um, we did things like the suspect flags, the weapon flags, uh, a different set of sentry gun changes. Um, the whole, you shoot somebody, the gun sees you commit a crime, so it starts shooting you. You can warp off, and the gun forgets, and then you can warp back in. Uh, it kind of, go on in. <laughs> um, it kind of really made a big difference to fighting on gates. It meant that smaller ships are more viable. Um, it meant you don't have to kill somebody and then sit in a space bot for 15 minutes and just not be able to do anything. Uh, it, it kind of it meant low sec PvP got a lot more fluid, I think. Um, so we had the PvP and the PvE flags, uh, which were then tied into the log-off nerf. Um, so now more people are dying if they try to close the client and, and kind of get out of being killed that way, uh, which is good because it was always a bit of a uh, an exploit. Um, and also uh, station docking games now. So we have uh, logistics, wreck people, they get a weapons timer, they can't dock. Um, it, uh, if you're going to commit your carrier, or if you're going to use your carrier to wrap somebody, you're going to commit to either wrapping them or dying. Um, we hooked in with the kill right stuff. Uh, that changes into the war deck things that um, Team Super Friends did. Um, but we, we kind of helped with some of that. Um, actually, there was relatively little fallout, considering the scope of the stuff that we changed. Uh, there was a lot of potential for things to go wrong. Concord could have left the server and decided not to turn up when things happened in high sec. Um, all sorts of uh, possible fallout, but we did pretty good, I think. And the feedback we got and the numbers we're seeing, uh, really positive response, so that's kind of good to see. Uh, then we did Retribution 1.1. We did dueling. Um, if anybody's seen this video, you probably recognize we have uh, Explorer and Soundwave showing how honorable PvP should, should work. Um, and this was the fix to the can flip mechanic that got brought up in the dev blog that I mentioned back in October. So part two, we're going to do some graphs. And all of this is kind of showing the before and the afters of, uh, of how the retribution worked out. So the first graph, um, ship values destroyed in PVP per week. So this is purely the hulls. We're not talking about modules or cargo or anything else. And you can see that um, you're talking about kind of like a, a trillion isk or so, or just over a trillion isk in uh, null sec, and um, you know, somewhere below that for low and then high, and then finally wormhole at the bottom. Um, the really good thing is the red line, it goes up. Uh, before and after retribution, it's kind of a nice steady increase. Uh, high sec gets a good increase as well. Null didn't change a lot, but then we wouldn't have expected it to because for what we were doing, uh, it didn't, uh, the crime much stuff didn't change much of the dynamic there. Um, you can see certain events that stand out in here. Um, this is what happens if you uh, click the wrong button in your Titan. <laughs> <laughs> you guys blew up a lot of stuff that day. Uh, as far as I could tell, that was the only time, the only day when more stuff uh, value died in low than in uh, null sec. Um, so that that uh, that was good. The servers. Yeah, they, uh, they, they did okay with that. Um, uh, another one you can see is the Titan in high sec when we did Caldari Prime. Uh, a lot of stuff you know, died there. Um, I ran this graph on last Monday, I think it was. Um, so right at the very end, I haven't labeled it, but the little uptick on the, on the high sec one, uh, I think is, is a few people playing around in Jita. 
Next one, and this is a really, really good one that I'm really kind of really happy with. Um, this is number of people dying to somebody else in low sec. Uh, ships and pods both had a massive increase. Um, like I said, I think the changes to the gate gun mechanics and uh, kind of the, the weapons timers made a big difference here. Uh, people are just going out and blowing stuff up and having a lot more fun. Um, again, one or two events. I don't know if there's any uh, Tuskers guys here? Obviously not. Any one? I think that was when you did a free-for-all in Jove Jovanen, whatever the system's called. Um, a lot of stuff died then. That was kind of good. And uh, what else have we got? Right, characters getting a set kit. So we changed a bit of the rules about taking set kits. Um, we kind of front-loaded the penalties for attacking rather than for doing the actual kill. But the actual number of people getting a, a set kit uh, had a nice big increase. And again, you can see the before and after. Um, low sec is big difference. High sec it went up a little as well. Um, I think the first couple of weeks is people learning the new system, playing around with the safety settings. Um, again, that big spike, what did I label? Yep, is Asakai yet again. <laughs> um, so if there's 5,500 people got a set kit, that must mean there's some people that they killed that weren't already criminals. So there must have been a lot more people there. I think there's one more. It's, yeah, Caldari Prime, we can see again. Um, we flagged people as they were coming into the system. Um, for the, the time the flight was going on, at the end, there was still a lot of people fighting. There was a lot of uh, stuff kind of stealing loot. And uh, so people were still kind of suicide ganking the whole night there. And the next one is, uh, is kind of interesting one. This is um, safety settings. If you remember the, f on the first release, that wasn't saved. So every time you uh, logged in, you would have to set your safety to whichever color you want. Um, then over Christmas, it, it got patched. And uh, we kind of did what we wanted to do all along, which was make it persistent. And then that means we can actually pull up queries like this. Um, so I've split it up, high sec, low sec, uh, null and wormhole, and then uh, full, partial, and, and no safeties. Um, and this is just the proportion of characters in each area, and what the safety is. I think there's three interesting points on this. Um, the first one, if you look at um, high sec and low sec, they're kind of a mirror of one another. Um, they're both, well, high sec has 70% uh, full, and uh, low sec has about 65% off. Um, and that's kind of maybe shows something about the the preferences of people like that. Um, the, the next interesting thing is low sec and null sec are very, very similar. Um, I'd imagine there's more people work going in, in null, traveling into low, and vice versa, and they tend to have a, a very kind of a common uh, behavior when it comes to setting the safety. Um, and the third thing is I was, I was quite surprised that partial safety across all systems is pretty low. Uh, especially low, I would have thought it would have been a more kind of one third, one third, one third split. Um, so most people tend to go full on safety or full on um, everything off, big boy button. If you press F1, things will happen. Um, so that brings us on to part three, what's next? Uh, so some stuff that we're gonna do in Odyssey. So you gonna start off um, security status. If you look at your character sheet, you'll have your security status value and you'll have your concord value. And you'll notice they're always the same. The reason they're the same is because in the database, there's one table, which is standings, and that's from this person or corporation or alliance or faction to some other entity. Uh, they have a standing of this value. And both of these numbers actually come from the same point in the database. So we can't change one without the other. Um, and that gives us a few problems. Uh, so yeah, so we can't change these. Um, so what we're going to do uh, for Odyssey is split these up. Check that out. We'll do that again. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are going to take your Concord standing, and uh, that will be obviously your your, your regular standing there. Um, we're going to take that standing and create a new attribute, which is your security status, and 
that will be primed from whenever your Congo standing is on patch day. And then the, if you like, the two points in that character sheet point to the two spots in a database. We can then change the rules, we can change what we do with each numbers um, without having to kind of worry about the interaction. The way that skills affect standings but they don't affect security status is always made that a bit awkward. So, yeah, on release day, we're going to copy the standing over. Uh, we then are going to reset all Concord standings to zero. Um, so your security status will be what your standing is now. Same rules are going to apply. Uh, at this point, Concord standing won't mean a lot. Um, there's a few things, but we're going to be kind of working on tidying those up. Um, but the important thing is there's not really going to be a way to increase your Concord standing right now. So if we have people who kind of get grandfathered into a minus 10 Concord standing with no way to ever, ever change that, that's going to cause some problems later on. So we're going to do the reset to zero. Um, if we want to do Concord agents, Concord missions, whatever, it gives us those options then to bring those in in a balanced point from, from the release day. So all the rules about uh, are you an outlaw, um, can you be legally shot, what happens if I shoot you, what happens if I kill an NPC and get a, a stack status increase, um, that's all going to use your, your security status attribute. So you won't actually notice a lot of difference uh, in the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and we're still going to keep the minus 10 to plus 10 range uh, just because it's what for people are familiar with. But if we wanted to adjust that and say sex status is 0 to 100 or whatever, then we can do that and we won't be touching the standing thing. Um, so moving it out is a good thing. Uh, it lets us do better code. The uh, kind of piggybacking on the standing system has always caused problems. Um, it doesn't update in real time. You can have a Concord standing of something in one system, and if you jump and change your standing, you can be in, have two different values in two different systems, and they don't get up to date. Uh, or don't, they're not kept up to date uh, very frequently. Um, it lets us do more interesting things to raise and lower security status. Maybe we'll talk about those a bit later. Um, cycle routing. Uh, some people do this, not many, um, not as many as maybe some people think. Um, but if you kill a, a, a rat in a solar system and then jump to another system and kill another rat, uh, you get this 15 minute time of running in both systems. And then you can, uh, you can kind of get sec status gains in parallel. Normally, if you're in one system, you can get one gain every 15 minutes. But with cycle routing, you can get one gain every 15 minutes every solar system. Um, this works because the old standing system has all these caches and delays and, and, and so on built in. Um, and it's kind of 15 minutes, but it's not explicit. It's just all of these systems interact, and 15 minutes is, is kind of the emergent behavior of it. Um, it's difficult to balance for it. It's not very good code. So by getting out of the standing system and just leaving that behind with the security status, we can then explicitly do what we want it to do. So it's going to be a five-minute timer now. Um, in the same way as your flags in the new system, uh, when, you, when you get a weapons timer or uh, any kind of other criminal flags, uh, and it follows you as you jump. And it's very explicit, and the client is always up to date, and we know exactly what's going on. Uh, we're going to use the same mechanic here. So as you move your five-minute timer of the last rat you killed, or the, sorry, the biggest rat you killed in the last five minutes moves with you. Um, so I think overall they, they kind of roughly balance out. I don't expect uh, a big change either way for uh, kind of getting sex status up. Um, so last year, going back again, we had CCB Grayscale, and I don't know if it's here somewhere. Make a noise. Yes, he's over there. Stood on the stage when it was like uh, 10 meters further forward and put this slide up. Um, at the time, this was about as designed as it was. It wasn't really much more than this. Um, but we want to do a bit more than that now. So what we are going to do is we, we have a thing called Tags for Sec. Um, it's a weird working title. Um, what we want to do is, and we, and we kind of came up with some goals of what this is to do. So we want to give people a reason to be in space, um, in particular be in low sec space. So we wanted to add something unique that only is found in low sec. Um, we want to add an alternative way for people to get a sex status up. Uh, there are people who have got down to minus 10 and can't 
bear the thought of grinding the way back up, and so they quit the game. Um, so it's a way that they can come in and earn ISK or assets in whatever way is fun for them and use that to then get their SEC back up. Uh, but we still want to respect the sandbox. So it's not going to be buy a Plex, redeem the Plex, go to plus five security status, because that's just not EVE. And I think Soundway was talking about some, some aspects of that in his previous talk. Um, we also wanted to reflect the Dust 514 storyline a little, uh, just to kind of add a little touch point of that into the game. So what we are going to do, we're going to add four new pirate tags. Um, as you can maybe see from the name, uh, they are clone, soldier, negotiator, recruiter, trainer, and transporter tags. Uh, they're going to be tradable on the market like anything else. Um, they have a, an ISK value, which is a payment to Concord, which we'll explain how that works uh, later. Um, the design. Uh, kind of, we expect these to be uh, have a variable demand. So some tags will be more in demand than others, um, and you'll probably realise why soon. So how do we get the tags? So for the five pirate factions, we're adding uh, for each faction we're adding four new NPCs. So you can see there's, there's 20 new NPCs that we're adding, um, and then uh, one, uh, sort of one of each rank for each NPC faction. They will drop tags with 100% chance. So you find an NPC. Uh, you kill it, there will be a tag in the wreck. So always going to be one tag for thing. And the trainer NPC of whichever faction drops the same tag. So there's no uh, Garista's recruiter tag. It's just uh, it kind of makes it a little easy to balance because some factions have more space than others. Uh, these are only going to spawn in low sec asteroid belts. It's the only place you'll find these NPCs. So where can you use these tags? Um, Concord and DD stations in low sec space only. So there's 45 of these stations, and uh, on the map there you can see they're kind of roughly scattered around the edges of Empire, and then a couple clustered in the middle. Um, I think the closest one of Jeter's like seven jumps, something like that. Uh, so to all of these stations, we're going to add a new service called the Security Office, and this is how you uh, kind of interact with the system. So what do you do with the tags? Uh, and this is why I said we expect them to be a, a gradient of demand. Each tag only, lets, uh, only fits a certain part of the security status bandwidth. So you can see a trainer tag, you'll need four trainer tags to go from minus 10 to minus 8. Uh, so each one is worth um, 0.5 of a unit of sec. Um, so if you want to go from minus 10 up to 0, you're going to need 20 tags. Um, in those proportions, four, six, six, four. On the left, you've got the, this is kind of the UI that, that we're going to have. Um, there's a draggable bar that you drag it up, and if you have the tags in your hanger and you have the ISK in your wallet, it will kind of count up how many you're going to pay, uh, how many you're going to use. Uh, it's going to tell you how much there is to pay. Um, don't read too much into the number. It's probably going to be balanced and changed a little. Um, and as you drag it up, uh, you'll see that the text kind of changes. Um, it tells you what the consequences of, of having that sec value is. Um, and so that's it. It's, it's a variation on the LP thing, but it's its, a, it's, its own UI. I think it's a, a, an easy one to use. So sum it up. What you do, you find an NPC, one of the new things. They're only going to be in low sec belts. Um, you kill it. There's a wreck. There's something in it. Uh, you loot the tag from the wreck. Um, you can buy or sell the tag on the market, or you can take it to one of these stations. Um, if you don't want to go ratting, but you've got some ISK, you can spend some ISK and buy or sell the tag on the market and take it to a station. So this is the respect the sandbox part of, of one of the goals. Um, or if you've got the tag, but you're not bothered about sex status, you can sell it for profit. So that circle there is kind of the the sandbox in action. We're going to have people who want tags, we're going to have people who've got ISK, uh, we're going to have people who've gone out ratting, and they're all going to meet, and somehow the market will figure out a value of tags. And from there, they'll figure out uh, how much is sex status worth. So that's going to be an interesting thing to, to see. Uh, we have some goals of where we think that number will be, but we're, uh, we'll, we'll see what you do. So you get the tag somehow, take it to the, the station, use the turn-in window. Um, 
then you pay your ISK and your tag and you gain security status. Quite simple. Uh, that's how it's going to work. Um, and I think that's mainly it. So we've got a lot of time for questions. Uh, there's going to be a roundtable on Saturday. Um, like I said, last year we had a lot of really good feedback and it kind of really helped us in the design of the Chrome Watch stuff then. So come along and then chat to us or grab myself or any of the other 5 devs and kind of we'll go from there. Um, look for dev blog next week. Uh, it's basically going to be the same content, a little bit more um, kind of clarification. The graphs that I showed were going to be in the dev blog as well, so uh, if you missed those. Um, this code, if you've got a, a fancy phone, um, there should be a survey at the end of this. There's some interesting questions. I'm sending in away. All right, yeah. I uh, hope you can see that now. And if you're watching on the stream, this might work as well. Um, there's a few questions in there. We would be interested in your feedback on that. Um, so there we go. Uh, if there's any more questions, there's a mic down there. I don't know what time it is, so someone will have to, to check on that. Um, thank you very much. Um, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I thought you said status could only go up to plus five. So I can't hear you very well. So I thought your sex status can only go to plus five maximum at the moment. Um, can sex status go above plus five? Technically it can. There's just no rat that will give you uh, a boost that will go up there. Okay. Uh, um, can you boost your sec above zero? Uh, using the tags, no. If you want to go above zero, you've got to do it old-fashioned way. Okay. Thank you. Is there a uh, limit to the number of tags that can be turned in per day, per week, per hour? Um, what, per person or just overall? Well, my thinking is you know, during burn Jita, you gank a freighter. You mm -hmm. go to low sec, you turn in tags, you go back to Jita, you gank a freighter, you go back to low sec. If Repeat. you can get a hold of enough tags to do that, go ahead. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, sorry, I just got that. Um, the four different type of tags. Yes. Do you need um, all of them, sort of them, to turn them in, or, or nope. just the amount of tags? Just um, go back, 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 back. Um, just the tags that fit into the bit of change you want. So if you want to go, if you're minus eight and you want to go to minus four, you just need the six recruiter tags and then the two transporter tags. That's so on the range, depending on the range. On the security range, you need specific tags. Yes. OK, thanks. Hi, I've got two questions. Uh, yep. The first is uh, with the flags as they exist today, um, particularly in uh, systems with a lot of people in high sec, you, uh, you can be uh, clicking on someone when they've got a suspect flag, um, only to find out that you then get concorded because of the lag. Is there anything that you have considered or might, might consider in terms of warning people when someone might be coming out of a particular flag state? Um, if you're attacking a suspect, you should get a limited engagement. Yes, but we've, I've already experienced the situation where they have that, but because there's a lot of lag going on, there's 500,000 plus people, mm -hmm. they're, they're suspect when you click it, but uh, they're literally just coming out of that suspect flag, so you get concorded because they've... If went. you put your safety to partial, you should be able to attack them, but the server will not let you get concorded. Ah, okay. That's what, uh, when I remarked about the safety settings, I was surprised more people don't do that, because that will guarantee you can... Um, so, yeah, if you're in, in low sec, that will let you attack a, a ship, but not get a pod. Um, if you're safe, as long as your safety isn't off, then you can attack anyone legally in high sec, and the server will let you. Mm -hmm. But it will not let you do an action that will get you concorded, as long as your safety is on. Okay. And uh, in terms of the, the, the spawn probability of the, mm -hmm. the tags, um, how are you distributing them across the, the, the four options? Um, in a way, you'll go out and, and figure that out. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Is there a thought of applying this tag system towards faction standings? Uh, initially, no. We possibly could do something like that. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Concord standings. Uh, do you, you said you couldn't gain them. Can you lose them by, say, suicide ganking? And if so, if they're low enough, will they spawn as soon as you jump into high sec and kill you? So you could be fine on sec. But so can you lose Concord by suicide ganking? Yeah. Um, Concord standings, not the. Yeah. At the moment, yes. When we decoupled them, it will be your sex status that you'll lose. So Just sex, so yes. Concord. And was there a second part, or was that covered it? Okay. Uh, just an, an observation. Uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, the, uh, the make or break of uh, this system of tags uh, probably would be uh, how many yes. there are uh, in the, in, uh, around, because uh, the, the prices in the market will be decided by, I suppose, uh, supply and demand law. Mm -hmm. In this case, if uh, there are too many, even if uh, it is too easy to put your hands on these tags, uh, the prices would go uh, so low that uh, everybody will be able to just uh, uh, pay few risks uh, to, to avoid the consequences. So I think it is uh, very important in game design uh, to actually take care uh, on uh, how many of these tags are actually seeded. Yes, very much. Um, there's several dials that we can kind of tweak to tune this, and uh, getting that balance is, like you say, very going to be very important. All right. Yep. Uh, not long ago, the sex status gain f was given for uh, rogue drones, which is great. I love it. However, I noticed it's not in line with the other kills. Mm -hmm. If in uh, pirate factions, you get the sex status appropriate to your highest value kill, in drone space, it's not that way. So if one kills a cruiser and a battleship, that person will not always receive the highest value kill sex status, not for the battleships. Is there a um, plan to actually fix it, or is it intended to be this way? Um, it's not exactly intended to be that way. There are some issues with, because rogue drones don't have a faction, um, that causes a few problems. If Betic is somewhere there, yeah. yes, uh, he's going to fix that. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hi, my name is Source Killer. Uh, with the Crime Watch, there was launched uh, a safe log off timer that checked did a, yeah. che is, uh, a lot of checks and see if you could log off safely. Yep. And when you have a super carrier and you jump out of home to a POS and you want to log off, mm -hmm. and then you do the checks, can it be improved so you, it does the countdown and log off when the timer runs out? So you actually don't have to be there and log off afterwards? Um. When the countdown times out, it should log you off. That's no, the, t it t the safe log off just check. You have a timer, you can't log off. Yeah, Matt, microphone. <laughs> yeah. CCP Grayscale. Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, how is working currently? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Freya here. Yeah, Fred, correct if I'm wrong. Um, if you've got a PvP timer running and you try to save log off, it says no. When that expires, then you start the timer, and then it will log off. Oh, the end, but there's okay. no like wait for two and a half minutes. I will click the button, and it will take. Uh, this yes. Thing. Wait for it. What? <laughs> yes. So yes, yes. <laughs> you can't start the PvP time at uh, the log off timer if you have a PvP. Yeah. But if you're in a safe space, what you're saying is why can't we just append the two and let you? Yeah, I know Wait out your I PvP and then auto safe log off. Yeah, I, I know that I want to log off, so I know when I use a POS, so I have the uh, set to keep down range, the tower, and I don't want to log off because mm -hmm. I feel safe enough. But I c if I close the client, the carrier will walk away and you have the timer another way. Yeah. You don't walk um. away when you're in a POS. You don't? So, um. Not if you log off inside of a POS. Okay. With the PvP, PvP timer, you get the uh, emergency warp. Only warp back, not warp off. Yeah. You should probably go on the mic so the stream people can, can hear what's going on. Yeah, if you, if you log off while you're inside a post force field, you'll never re warp. That's just an exception to the log off code. Normally, you'll leave, but if you're inside a post force field legally, then it will just leave you where you are and you'll disappear in space where you are. So you never get warped okay. out if you log in a post. Okay. <laughs> A question about uh, the splitting of the, the Concord standing, which yes. is security standing. Does that have any effect on systems that are Concord controlled, yeah, like ULI? When you have a low uh, security standing and you jump into ULI, um, the gates lock. 
Yes. Uh, does that have any effect on this change? That's one of the outcomes of this change. Uh, the security status will uh, will affect this, but your standing to Concord, because we reset it to zero, um, it will be like jumping into any other space owned by a faction that doesn't like you. Okay, um, so I, in, if I'm in a frigate and I have a bad security standing, I will be able to jump out of ULI yeah. in time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hey. Hey. Um, a couple of releases ago, there was a change done where um, if you were fleet ratting um, and in a fleet you were ratting together, um, it used to be that everyone who got a hit on the rat got the, got got the bonus yep. status. That broke and then was fixed again. Yep. With the changes, is that going to continue? Mm -hmm. um, there's no plan at the moment to change how it works right now. Thank you. Uh, with the splitting and the new system, do you need to be in the system the five minutes uh, to gather the security status? No. Um, if you jump system or dock or log off, the timer will follow wherever your character goes. So I, need, I don't need to be there to gain the security? No. Okay. Okay, so my observation with this security status tag deal, mm -hmm. you basically give the pirates an I win button, is what I've observed. So. Are you foreseeing there's going to be a lot of feedback from the Care Bears, or, and it's going to get nerfed? Because um, basically what I see is I can, my whole corporation, we stockpile these tags. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a roam over to JITA. We got everybody's security status, and you're going to have a lot of angry freighter pilots in JITA. So yep. is there going to be any? I mean, where are you going to get the tags? Well, we live in low sec, so. OK. So you're going to be in the low sec belts writing? Sure. So then people can come and kill you while you're in the, writing, while you're in the belts. Well, they're right? not going to kill me. Because I'm looking, if I'm in the, I'm the pirate, so. Huh? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this kind of the, the thinking, the thinking that this has kind of come from is that um, you've got to do the work at some point. Previously, you'd have to go to GT and you kill someone and then you spend some time grinding and then you get your stack back up and then you go back out and do it. And there's a period of, period of work, which is the grinding your sec that you have to do to get your sec up. Um, kind of the balance we're aiming for here is that that grinding still has to happen. You still need the money to pay for the tags. You need to pay, and if, if getting enough tags to get you from minus 10 to zero is the same amount of time as the time it takes you to grind from minus 10 to minus zero, there's like a, like a basically a cost for doing that work. And if you get someone else to do it, you want to buy the tags, that's fine. But you've got to do the equivalent amount of work to make the ISK to pay for their time. And if you want to stockpile the tag yourself, wherever that guy's gone, like, there's that, Christian, you here? Uh, What's well, that thing that Catholics do where they like do the punishment first? <laughs> the thing that Catholics do where you do the punishment first and then you do the crime afterwards. It's <laughs> It's living in fear of God. Okay, whatever, but there's a thing, like, so, like, you could basically, if you want to stockpile the tags and then you want to go to Jita, fine, you've done all your grinding up front, but you've still done that grinding. You're not taking that work away. We're not saying you get it for free. Someone somewhere has to kill those rats and get those tags, and someone has to pay them for their time. If you're paying yourself for your time because you're doing your own tags, that's fine, but the economics should balance out. We're not taking any work out of the system. We're just letting you, A, move it around in time, and B, pick what you want to grind. If I don't want a rat, I want to play the market, or I want to do wormholes, or I want to do PI, that's fine, but you do the work, and then you use the work to pay for the sex state. It balances out the same kind of way. It just lets you shift it around to a place that's not let me sit in low second cycle through belts for six hours and then shoot myself. And we're getting, as a guy here says, we're getting people into belts in low sex so you can go shoot them. As far as I'm concerned, it's kind of win-win. <laughs> A uh, couple of quick questions. Uh, is your intention to have the tags required to go from the lowest sec up to the next tier and so on uh, more rare to have the lowest tags and more common to get, say, the negotiator ones, like uh, um, spawning wise? There will be a gradient in rarity. Okay. Um, also, uh, as I understand it, if you have a higher sec status and you shoot someone, say you've got like one or something, and you shoot mm -hmm. with someone with negative three. Uh, you get a less of a hit than if you were negative yep. two and you shot someone who was one. That's, that's how it still is yes. implemented, right? Th yeah. Uh, is there, this might be a silly question, is there currently an implementation of if you shoot, if you kill a pirate who's, say, negative five or lower, do you get a, a bonus to your sec? Do you get a, as if, the same way you kill a rat, 
Is that implemented or is that something that is um, still being considered? It was one of the ideas last year that the Grayscale had. Um, it's not going to be implemented. Um, there's concerns about alts. I mean, if I have a minus 10 alt and I just shoot him constantly, then it's kind of breaking. Right. So there's, there's issues doing it that way. Okay. Um, and at the moment, there's no plan to, to try and tackle that. OK. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you briefly mentioned it earlier, but is there anything to stop people from just buying plexes and uh, getting on the set back that way? Or do you not see that as a problem? Um, no, that's the perfectly fine. Um, the, plex, the tags that you're going to buy, somebody is going to make a profit in that case, and somebody has already done the work. So it's, it's like buying a plex, selling, uh, buying a plex for money, selling the plex for ISK, and buying a battleship. Mm -hmm. um, somebody still had to make that battleship. Oh, fair enough. Thank you. Um, I was curious. Uh, you said it was um, supposed to take as much time to grind up sec in zero sec as mm -hmm. opposed to collecting these tags. Is there going to be a gradient to the spawn rate depending on the security status of the system? For instance, more valuable routes are always located in more negative sec status. Um, it, are these things going to be spawned more in like 0.1s as you see like more battleships spawning now? Or is this going to have a uniform across low sec effect? Uh, it's not going to be uniform. So it is going to be more highly spawned in 0.1s? There's, there's going to be variations. Um, <laughs> if, you c if you can figure out the patterns, you might be able to farm tags a little bit easier. That's mm -hmm. all we're going to say. Fair enough. I have a couple other questions about the, uh, the rats. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than the fact that they drop tags 100% of the time, at least to begin with, um, is they're going to, do you have any plans for the spawn rate of the rats? And when they do spawn, uh, whatever the rate is, are they going to have a certain AI, like sleeper AI? Are they going to also drop bounties? Will they also increase security status by themselves? Um, that's like seven questions. <laughs> Going, probably going backwards until I forget where you started. Um, yes, they'll have a bounty. Yes, they will give a small sec increase for themselves. Um, can't remember. You said uh, they will drop loot. Like I think they're, they'll, they'll drop loot similar to a, a normal cruiser or battle cruiser. And they'll be salvageable. A salvageable or like you, normal stuff. Yeah. Will they have standard mission AI? Um, they'll have normal belt rat AI. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Which is sleeper AI, Which is sleeper AI now. Um, pretty much all rats. Use or all NPCs use the sleep AI or some, some variation of it. Hey, uh, so you're effectively removing the sex safari thing, the cycling, mm -hmm. uh, and you're changing it to five minutes updates. Does that mean that, uh, like, good old fashioned sitting in the anomaly all day long gets uh, like a 150% or 300% sorry boost? Like, will you still be getting the same? Some of the NPCs will be tweaking how much sec you get for them. Okay, so, so I so won't be getting like the battleship uh, sec that I get now, just three times as much. Or um, like, you oh. no, we we sort of overall. I think the balance of, of pluses and minus will probably end up about the same, maybe slightly lower from where okay. it is now. Thank you. Okay. Are you going to give the um, these rats any tank or damage to make it difficult for ships that can fit Kovops cloaks to farm them? Um, so you don't have like a bomb, a stealth bomber running Kristen, around. do you want to answer this one? Is it going to be really easy for people to fly around in a stealth bomber and farm these rats? Can you do it on the mic so the stream gets it? Is there any balance in regard to the tank or the damage on these ships so that a stealth bomber can't farm them? Mm -hmm. uh, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are these rats going to point? Okay, so th they should be a good challenge. Um, on the forum a while back, there was an idea, or when you removed like the D D D ones and twos that were static in low sec, there was kind of a little bit of a mm -hmm. peak in like, uh, hey, we use these for like PvP stuff. Yep. Um, do you think there's any way of putting in new? Plexes, it's kind of not like faction warfare plexes, but kind of the same thing that are just more places for people in low sec two PvP or there are attractions. Maybe not necessarily money makers or maybe using these tags, but um, something to attract people besides just belts. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's like a little arena. I don't say arenas. That has a lot just of kind of landmarks or something yeah. to, to focus people into fights. Um, and maybe with frigate restrictions and such. Yeah, uh, there's no immediate plans, but I know that the guys are aware that taking these dungeons out um, had some consequences as far as that. So they, I think we would like to put things back in that would act as kind of little focal points, hmm. but they were removed because they were being farmed. And they weren't actually generate well, they were generating fights, but they weren't generating as, as much as they were supposed to. Um, so if something was added, it would be to encourage somewhere to fight over, not somewhere just to farm. Okay, cool. So I think, are we time for one more? Hello. Um, yeah. Has there been any discussions on uh, implementing new features to the existing tag system? So like the regulars and the elite tags? That was one of the ideas for this originally. Um, the problem is there's so many tags out there. Uh, it would be impossible to introduce something that would be balanced from the offset that wouldn't just be a massive shock to the economy on day one. So kind of the idea of adding new tags means that we can start with zero supply or, or zero stockpiles and hopefully keep the, keep the balances in check. Uh, so at the moment, no. Other than the, some, I think some of the LP stores require some of them, some but of them. the majority of them have no, no purpose. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. I think we're done. So, thank you.